In this video, we're gonna look at research design for qualitative studies. We'll start by first explaining what research design is, and then we'll explore four popular research design options for qualitative studies so that you can make the best choice for your project. Speaking of which, if you're currently working on a dissertation or thesis, be sure to grab our free chapter templates to help fast track your write-up. These tried and tested templates provide a detailed roadmap to guide you through each chapter step by step. If that sounds helpful, you can find the link in the description. So let's start with the basics and ask the question, what exactly is research design? Simply put, research design refers to the overall plan or strategy that guides a research project from its conception to the final analysis of data. A good research design serves as a blueprint for how you, as the researcher, will collect and analyze data while ensuring consistency, reliability, and validity throughout your study. Within qualitative research, the four most common research designs are phenomenological, grounded theory, ethnographic, and case study. Having a good understanding of the different qualitative research design options available to you is essential. Without a clear, big picture view of how you'll design your research, you run the risk of making misaligned choices in terms of your methodology, especially the data collection and analysis related decisions. In this video, we'll look specifically at research design for qualitative studies, but if you're interested in the quantitative side of things, we've got a video covering that too. You can find the link in the description. So now that we've defined research design, let's dive into the four most popular design options for qualitative studies. First up, we've got phenomenological research design. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a mouthful. This type of research design involves exploring the meaning of lived experiences and how they are perceived by individuals. Phenomenological design seeks to understand people's perspectives, emotions, and behaviors in specific situations. Here, the aim of researchers is to uncover the essence of human experience without making any assumptions or imposing preconceived ideas on their subjects. For example, you could adopt a phenomenological design to study why cancer survivors have such varied perceptions of their lives after overcoming their disease. In practical terms, you could achieve this by interviewing survivors and then analyzing the data using a qualitative analysis method, such as thematic analysis, to identify commonalities and differences. Importantly, phenomenological research typically involves using in-depth interviews or open-ended questionnaires to collect rich, detailed data about participants' subjective experiences. This richness is one of the key strengths of phenomenological research design, but it also contributes to its limitations. Given the depth of data collected, this type of design generally involves a relatively small sample size, limiting the generalizability of the findings. Additionally, the highly interpretive nature of the design increases the risk of researcher bias. If you wanna learn more about researcher bias, we've got a video covering that too. Link, of course, is in the description. Next up, we've got grounded theory, also referred to as GT. This type of research design aims to develop theories by continuously analyzing and comparing collected data from a relatively large number of participants. Importantly, grounded theory takes an inductive, bottom-up approach with a focus on letting the data speak for itself without being influenced by pre-existing theories or the researcher's preconceptions. Grounded theory typically involves collecting data through interviews or observations and then analyzing it to identify patterns and themes that emerge from the data. These emerging ideas are then validated by collecting more data until a saturation point is reached. In other words, no new information can be squeezed from the data. From that base, a theory can then be developed. 
As an example, let's assume your research aims involve understanding how people cope with chronic pain from a specific medical condition, with a view to developing a theory in relation to this. Here, a grounded theory design would allow you to explore the matter thoroughly without preconceptions about what coping mechanisms might exist. Initially, you may find that some patients prefer cognitive behavioral therapy, while others prefer to rely on herbal remedies. Through multiple iterative rounds of data collection and analysis, you could then develop a theory derived directly from the data. As you can see, grounded theory is ideally suited to studies where the research aims involve theory generation, especially in under-researched areas. Naturally, however, grounded theory can be quite time intensive, given the need for multiple rounds of data collection and analysis. Third on the list is ethnographic research design. This type of design involves observing and studying a culture-sharing group of people in their natural setting to gain insight into their behaviors, beliefs, and values. The focus here is on observing participants in their natural environment, as opposed to a controlled or artificial environment. This is not to say that ethnographic research design relies purely on observation. On the contrary, it typically also involves in-depth interviews to explore participants' views, beliefs, etc. However, unobtrusive observation is a core component of the ethnographic approach. As an example, an ethnographer may study how different communities celebrate traditional festivals. This may involve a lengthy period of observation combined with in-depth interviews to further explore specific areas of interest that emerge as a result of the initial observation period. As you can probably imagine, ethnographic research design has the ability to generate rich, contextually embedded insights into the socio-cultural dynamics of human behavior. Naturally though, it does come with its own set of challenges, including researcher bias, since the researcher can become quite immersed in the group, participant confidentiality, and predictably, ethical complexities. All of these need to be carefully managed if you choose to adopt this type of research design. Last but not least is case study design. With this research design, you, as the researcher, investigate a single individual or a single group of individuals to gain an in-depth understanding of their experiences, behaviors, or outcomes. Unlike other research designs that are aimed at broader, more diverse samples, case studies offer a deep dive into the specific circumstances surrounding a person, group of people, event, or phenomenon, generally within a bounded setting or context. As an example, a case study design could be used to explore the factors influencing the success of a specific business. This would involve diving deeply into the organization to explore and understand what makes it tick, from marketing to HR to finance. In terms of data collection, this could include interviewing staff and management, surveying customers, and reviewing documents such as company policies and financial statements, for example. While this example is focused squarely on one organization, it's worth noting that case study research design can have different variations, including single case, multiple case, and longitudinal designs. As you can see in the example I mentioned, a single case design involves intensely examining a single entity to understand its unique characteristics and complexities. Conversely, in a multiple case design, multiple cases are compared and contrasted to identify patterns and commonalities. Lastly, in a longitudinal case design, a single case or multiple cases are studied over an extended period of time to understand how factors develop across time. A case study research design is particularly useful when a deep and contextualized understanding of a specific phenomenon or issue is desired. However, the strength is also its weakness. In other words, you can't generalize the findings from a case to study the broader population. So be sure to carefully consider your research aims and questions when deciding on your research design. In some cases, generalizability is essential. In others, it's irrelevant. All right, so there you have it. In this video, we've explored four popular qualitative research designs, phenomenological, grounded theory, ethnographic, and case study. 
Keep in mind that this is by no means an exhaustive list of qualitative research designs, but it's a useful starting point. If you want to learn more, be sure to visit the Grad Coach blog. Alternatively, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one support with your research project, check out our private coaching service, where we hold your hand throughout the research process step by step. You can learn more about that and book a free consultation at gradcoach.com.